Well, morning, Nigel. Um, you may have to cut this video or whatever, but that's not a problem. Um, to answer some of your questions, well, first of all, my name is Keith Goff, CEO of Sunsync. Um, I'm actually based in Hong Kong. This is not a visual background. Some people think this is absolutely real. It's a, it's a real product. So um, this is actually in our, um, we have a workshop stroke, um, workshop and as I mean, in sort of training workshop um, because we also do a lot of business in Hong Kong, uh, as well as Australia, United Kingdom, of course, South Africa, which is a major market for us. Um, I'm from the United Kingdom. I've been in Hong Kong since the 80s. And we also, or I've worked a lot of time in Ningbo, together with my son, um, who has been stationed in Ningbo for a long time. So you probably notice a lot of our inverters are produced in Ningbo, and that's the connection. So you asked me a number of questions, um, backgrounds to the origin of, Sun, of Sunsync. Um, Global Tech itself, which is the parent company, is about 25 years old. Um, I used to work for a very large electrical company as the chief technical officer or director, technical director. And we were basically involved in the development of cameras from inception, which is the CMOS camera. And I was involved right from the very beginning from when it came out of the university in Edinburgh, right through and into the inception when it was put into the mobile phones. Um, my one comment, if you ask, uh, I made many years ago was um, I was involved. I wanted to, I thought the market for this camera was for security. Um, one of my friends said, well, I'm going to have a go at um, selling to mobile phones. I think there's a market, which I replied, can't see every, anybody ever wanting a camera and a mobile phone. Uh, big mistake. His company is worth billions and billions of US dollars. It's on the NASDAQ. Anyway, that's so we all make mistakes. So Sunsync, I've actually always been interested in inverters, even from many years ago, I'm almost 60 years old. And from when I was at school, uh, always interested in the old fashioned type inverter. Them days, we just used a big transformer. And we cut a couple of transistors and people who are in electronics um, probably remember two N3055s, which is a big transistor. Um, before that, they even used to using a device called a vibrating device, which is a vib which sounds a bit rude. It's not. It's a it's a type of relay on a pendulum, and it moves backwards and forwards, and it buzzes, and it creates a, an AC current. And the very old transistor radio, well, not transistor, sorry, vacuum tube radios they used to use in cars, used to use um, these devices to create the high voltages for the vacuum tubes. Um, and and they were great. You can you could build your uh, small inverter. And it was always, it, when I, you know, from, from, a, from when I was at school, it was also a magic trick. Uh, I could actually get a television working in a car. Now, take that, um, well, 50 years, almost 50 years ago, this was, this was a bit of magic and people were like, how the hell do you do that? And so I was always quite interested in this sort of technology. Fast forward. Um, having made many things in the past and I'm sort of quite sort of an electrical engineer. Um, I like making things. I was always very interested in inverters and many years ago, I was quite interested in wanting to make a, a, a grid uh, tied inverter because I felt there was a market for it. And at the time, these things weren't really developed, but they were just evolving and to actually make an inverter that you can connect a solar panel directly to the grid. This was quite revolutionary. And I set about and we, we made our first samples and our first samples blew up and didn't work very well. And um, we, we got a working unit going, but it was very expensive. Um, and it was early days, technology was early. There was no chips that would do everything. We have to do everything in discrete. And very strangely, I met a gentleman, in fact, I contacted uh, a gentleman who was advertising an inverter on eBay. And I looked at this inverter and it was like 100 US dollars. And I think, well, how the hell do they do this? Mine's like $400. I'm already talking about a 200 watt on grid inverter, tiny inverter, 200 watt inverter. And anyway, so because I've, I chased this guy and chased this guy. And I, I, there's a whole story. I won't tell you the whole story because I'll bore you. But if you're interested, maybe one time I'll tell you. But to cut a long story short, um, I ended up in a factory, which wasn't his factory. But I met a guy called Professor Liu. 
and the professor actually developed the product and we become very good friends um, professor Liu and i um, we started and we developed our very first inverter and a lot of the engineers there um, he had a good team and they were all um, fresh grads and in fact we moved premises they had the original one which was in a really rough place and then moved to the university by the university onto the science park really nice place and um, we developed our first inverter we were developing lighting products as well and the first inverter it didn't we made it we launched it we did a great launch um, we upped the power to 250 watts I got the G83 approval it cost a fortune and it didn't sell very well it really didn't sell um we sold a few hundred pieces i've still got plenty of the samples we made all the plastic tooling it must have cost me hundreds of thousands but made a mistake and by the time we'd launched it by the time we got all the, the final approvals through then we were being beaten by other companies who had much larger systems and they were selling 1000 and 2000 watts on green inverter um, so we sort of miss the boat a little bit. It's the same technology nowadays that's used in the, the microinverter. So it's, it's the technology is good, but we just miss the boat. So it's a little bit about the history about it. Going fast forward, um, we continue in the solar um, as well as we do other products. So we can solar and lighting business. And we, <clears throat> we got involved in vehicles and caravans and supplying solar panels to factory fitted into, into vehicles together with regulators that we developed in the factory. Um, but passion always on the inverter. So always, always on the inverter, always coming up with ideas, trying to make something better. And the original one we came with, well, let's do a power bank. We call power bank, which was an inverter and a battery all in one. And this is the focus we tried, but this, this is sort of, this is the early beginnings and you know, it's quite interesting and I, I won't go through the whole history um, of it because I don't know whether there's some restrictions to the IPO, I, IP, intellectual property rights, but we started from the very beginning and here we are now. Um, we have a great product. We have a really good product. So you're asking me what, um, what makes SunSync formidable in the South African marketplace? Well, we did study, I've, I've worked in South Africa for quite a number of years with a few, with, with a number of companies. Um, I know the culture of the people, uh, I get on very well. I, I like South Africa. Um, maybe I come from England, I come from Liverpool, which is a fairly, fairly rough city. Um, and it's okay, I, get, I, I, I don't mind. And, um, you know, I like the sort of the culture and I like the sort of, um, sort of the, the, the whole the whole way people do business. There's no sort of errors or graces, you know, that, that's it. And so we set out to have a product that, that worked. And we tried to make our operating system special. Um, I tried to, part of our operating system, because we thought about off grid. And one of the things I always want to say, well, hold on a second, you, you're generating power. You need to know how much power you generate and how much you use. It has to be very clearly shown. So we put it on the bar graph and we have a very clear thing. So we tried to generate a, an operating system that was really simple, really good, and really robust to use. So, you know, as far as SunSync is concerned, um, we're here for a long period. And we're going to continue to do what we do. So he asked another question. Why are so many installers playing essential? So, Personally, I hope, I hope, and I, and I really appreciate the support, and I'm trying my best we, to, to give the support. We, we, we operating, we've got a service center in Soweto with two engineers. We have um, a number of engineers on, uh, in South Africa, various other engineers, remote engineers in China, as well as the South Africa and India and Hong Kong and myself. And, you know, people often, you know, I get asked questions, maybe 10 or 20 every day. Sometimes I have to apologize because I don't always reply or the time I do reply eventually, but sometimes the time difference. And so, you know, on a Friday night, um, you know, I do like a beer. I, I confess I like a beer and not, I, I'm not, I'm talking about heavily, but I, I like a couple of beers and a, Saturday, and a Friday night or something or a Saturday night I go um, with family for a couple of beers and, and a meal. And I've been getting messages then because the time difference. So sometimes I don't reply. I won't, I, I won't, I won't reply if I'm, if I'm out with the family. But normally I will, will reply and normally Sunday mornings I'll sit and I'll read through and I'll try and reply stuff that I've missed. But 
you know, I trying to give the support. We're really trying to give the support and support everybody. Uh, I, I'm a hands-on electrical engineer. I've fitted the stuff, you know, even, all the Sunsync stuff, I've installed it myself. I've absolutely installed stuff myself. Um, you know, sort of got myself dirty. We, we initially started fitting these things on boats in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a lot of high rise buildings. So it's very difficult to, um, you know, you can't have a hybrid inverter on a high rise building. And we've also got low rise, but the feed in tariff in Hong Kong is ridiculously high. Um, it's five Hong Kong dollars, which is about 70 cents US per kilowatt hour um, feed in tariff. It's crazy, but that's what it is. And so therefore there is no market for the, for the household for um, storage systems because the power is very is solid, it's rock solid um but it's hong kong is a small place so that's that's the thing but the other part of it is there are a lot of boats and these are these are big boats these are boats that people live on and so it was a great testing ground to test the inverters with generators in a very harsh environment because boats are an incredibly harsh environment and you're down there in the engine room it's hot we're trying to run generators and you know some of the generators are not the biggest generator we put a 10 kva generator and it's suddenly like taking a load and then the generator is slowing down and we had to compensate so we had to step the power step we were sort of stepping up to the, from the generator so there's, there's lots of things that we learned and so we try to do all of this and it's great to do that i listen to people people make comments we look about the earth bonding that people made the flow charts the way some of the things operate so try to listen when people make comments and try to make improvements. So hopefully we're not just such a distance company, but I'm a hands-on and I'm always open and people always text me and ideas and stuff. And I will always, always try to support. Um, what does SunSync mean for the future of energy, i.e. scalable? Well, actually, um, yeah, we're gonna talk about scalable because in, in Australia, we there is an issue and it's to do there, there's some areas for example in and i'll use australia because i think south africa may well go the same way but in um south australia some days nearly the entire power is coming from solar it's all on grid so fantastic you might say it's absolutely fantastic but there is a huge problem with this because then suddenly cloud comes and whatever on certain areas and the power is going from almost 100% of solar to absolutely nothing from solar and so therefore the grid has to compensate that sudden surge uh, well the problem is for the grid you've got these generators whizzing around and suddenly no load and how to control it how to stabilize the grid because you're going to get voltage drops and everything going on because when the less on the grid the transformer tappings change and suddenly boom you get a massive load on mass and it gives a massive um, stability on the grid so how they're looking to try to do it is store the excessive power in batteries so when the when the when the when, the, when, the, when basically when the grid when people are generating their own the micro generation then the excessive power the grid produced they want to dump it into batteries and put it back in and i think the same thing's going to happen eventually in south africa uh, because more and more people will get the systems and especially these, I see these large shopping malls with these um, grid tied systems. These grid tied systems will give problems, especially these huge grid tied systems are going to give problems. Unless you're doing interlinks from other countries and, and they always talk about interlink and this is part of the, the, um, the, the, IE, the, the, the Institute of Engineering Technology, which I'm a member but they actually talk about interlink. So therefore you, you're pulling your power from someone that's got sun and you, you cross over. That's the future of the planet. We're not there yet. So basically the scalability will, will have to be um, using larger systems. And the sun sink at the moment, we can run up to about 120 uh, megawatt on inverter. We have a rack mounted inverter. So the rack mounted inverter can rack mount and you can use rack mounted batteries. And that's more for the utilities or for larger areas. We are planning to do a um, hybrid inverter up to 100 megawatt, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> 100 kilowatt. Um, so we are looking to do um, up to 100 kilowatt. It would be nice to say 100 megawatt, but no, 100 kilowatt um, single um, three phase inverter. We've also got three fa another th three phase inverter coming out soon, which will probably be November, which we can run on imbalanced load. 
It's a really nice product. So you've got three phases. Nice thing about this is if you normal say it's a 10 kilowatt, so a 10 kilowatt three phase. If you're drawing, say, normal 10 kilowatt three phase, you'll draw three kilowatts, 3.3, 3.3, 3.3 phase. R1, you could draw, say, five kilowatt or six kilowatt one phase, three kilowatt another phase, and two kilowatt another phase. It can run in balance as well as balance. It's got the phase rotation, so it run three phase product as well as an imbalance load. Perfect for South Africa because I notice many houses are wired in three phase, and of course you can parallel. That's probably a future. So we've got we've got a sort of roadmap of products. So try to cover most of the things. Um, you know, I'm as I say, I am an engineer. Uh, I'm not a sales guy. Uh, I can I like talking. Um, so um, feel free to any comments or whatever. People come comments and suggestions, but. We've been at this a long time. We're not new kids on the block. Um, maybe the name's relatively new, but the, the name was registered a long, long time ago. Um, but um, no, thank you everybody for your support. And from my side, from something, then I'll, I will of course support everybody and support as much. And, and if we need the resources, we will put the resources there. Thank you.